Hey everyone, it's uh, David Barnett from investlocalbook.com, the website and blog site and YouTube channel where I talk about local investing deals, private loans and leases, buying and selling businesses, and anything else that viewers or readers want to ask me about. Um, today is really awesome because I was able to connect with Cato Pistol, um, who is the CEO of Lending Loop, which is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, lending platform here in Canada. We're going to talk a little bit to Cato about what Lending Loop does and how it helps investors and entrepreneurs. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that they had in actually getting going here in Canada. Cato, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. How are you today? Great. Thanks for having me. Um, as a, you know, just as an introduction for the people that don't know LendingLoop.ca, um, what exactly does the website do for people, for, for both audiences, I guess, that you speak to? Yeah, so Lending Loop is a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. We connect small businesses that are looking for financing with individual investors, people like yourself and myself that are looking for a higher return on their capital. Uh, so when a small business wants a loan, they'll apply through us. Um, we'll underwrite and evaluate that loan. And if it's approved, we'll then post it on our online marketplace where individual investors from across Canada can lend money to that business. Now, in the past, um, I've looked at pooling money with other people to make business loans. And what I ran into is, is as soon as you want to get outside of your, your scope of immediate friends and people that you're connected to, you run into a lot of securities regulation, which in Canada varies by province, which makes it kind of complicated. Now, can you talk a little bit about how you guys had to face those regulatory challenges? Because this peer-to-peer -peer lending idea started many years ago in the UK and the US and we're able to get into this. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you guys address those issues? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you may know, we, we launched back in uh, 2015. Uh, and the time we launched, there wasn't really a clear regulatory framework for peer-to-peer -peer lending to operate, as you mentioned. I mean, there's a whole host of securities laws and regulations. There's banking rules, payments, uh, and a whole host of other regulations that are obviously you know, somewhat applicable to the sector. Um, so we were kind of in somewhat of an uncharted territory, being the first platform to ever come to Canada about 10 years after it actually started in the UK. Um, so kind of fast forward to the beginning of 2016, we actually had an opportunity to work with the securities regulators to kind of go and, and figure out the applicable framework that Lending Loop could actually operate within. Um, so because of all the complexities and nuances in traditional securities laws that may have not been as, as applicable to the lending side of things, we kind of had the opportunity to sit down with the regulators and work with them um, to actually figure out how we could make sure that this was a viable and sustainable business model and also compliant with the applicable regulations. So the regulators, what was their primary concern? Was it the protection of investors, making sure they were fully informed? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's that's always, you know, from the securities regulated standpoint, uh, investor protections or protecting the retail investor, protecting the little guys, as, as I think they like to call it, uh, is probably their number one concern. But if you unbundle that, there's obviously a whole host of challenges as well that you need to get through in terms of what is the product that you're selling, who's selling it to them, what do you need to understand about that investor, um, you know, is it something that they're doing themselves? Are you building a portfolio of loans for them? So, you know, there's a whole lot of different areas that you have to consider when you're, when you're kind of making that, that decision process. We wanted to keep it really simple. So we kind of boiled it down to something that was very simple, which is, you know, this is a small business that's looking for financing. They're an individual business and they want a group of people to lend money to them, right? It's a loan, it's not an equity investment. It's a simple kind of loan with, which is amortizing, has interest, and they get repaid after the life of the loan. Um, so I think making it simpler really helped us to, to simplify a lot of the rules and regulations around what we're doing. So basically what happens if there's a business, for example, that wants $50,000, you can go out and find 500 people that are willing to lend $100 each, and then you administer the loan, and as the payments come in, you trickle back those funds into those individuals' hands, basically is how it works, right? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So we handle all of that. You know, not only are we doing the upfront evaluation of the loan, but we're then managing, you know, 
all of the individual lenders making sure that, that they're happy and having a good experience and they actually have their, their balances in place. We provide them with monthly statements. And as you said, on each individual loan, we're collecting that big payment from the, from the borrower and dispersing that to the hundreds or even potentially thousands of lenders uh, who have lent money to that particular loan. Um, so that's really our role as the intermediary is, you know, vetting the businesses that are coming through on the front end and also making sure that the back end servicing and administration is taken care of too. So how big would the average investor be? I mean, are there people in here playing around with a few hundred dollars or is it the average a few thousand? Like what, what sort of is the size of your average investor? Yeah, average is probably in the thousands. Um, I mean, there, there are some, some larger investors who uh, are up in the hundreds of thousands in terms of how much they're lending. Now, that's being lent on a diversified basis, so that's not to one particular loan, but they may lend 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 to a particular loan over 100 loans. Um, which can obviously add up. Uh, and on the on the small side, we have people lending as little as $25. So the $25 minimum, we sat to really allow people to, to try this out because it's so new to Canada and a less of an established model here than it is, for example, in the UK. We really wanted people to, to be able to actually test it out, see how everything works and get comfortable with the platform before moving any significant amount of money over. So you know that's why we've really opened it up to pretty much anyone who wants to try it. So you only lend to businesses, right? There's no personal loans involved in lending loop, right? Yep. Uh, as of today, it's all small business loans. That's right. Okay. What are the loans typically for? You know, a wide variety of reasons. And um, the, the businesses are across different geographies. So they're across Canada from East to West Coast. They're across many different industries. So from professional services to manufacturing and construction, um, or even to restaurants and retail. So there's a wide variety of different types of borrowers that we have. And even in terms of uh, loan purpose, we've got things like working capital loans, growth loans, expansion loans, refinancing loans. So, you know, inventory purchases, hiring employees, there's a whole host of different reasons that businesses need capital. What's really exciting about that is not that you're able to help, not only that you're able to help uh, so many different small businesses access financing, but you're also diversifying your risk by having access to all of these different types of opportunities, right? Um, so I, I noticed that you guys give scores or ratings to the different loan opportunities. So uh, for example, if a business wanted to buy a piece of machinery, would Lending Loop create a secured loan? Is that something you guys looked at, or is it are all the loans unsecured? Um, that, that's listed on each particular loan, so you can actually see it varies on a loan to loan basis. I guess is the answer. On every loan, there's at least one of either a general security agreement or a personal guarantee from the business owner. Uh, in most cases, we actually have both of those. Um, so if you actually look on a particular borrower that's looking for financing, we list exactly the security that we're taking. And in the case that, yes, there was a specific piece of, of collateral that we would be able to take security on, that, that's definitely something we would look into doing. You know, For example, if there was a truck or a piece of equipment that had a VIN number, we may take security on that specific asset. More often than not, it's a general security agreement. So it's over all of the business's assets that, that we're taking security. Okay. You guys are relatively new. Have you had to deal with any defaults yet? Yeah, so we've been uh, lending for about 18, 19 months now. Um, we do, we have had a couple of defaults in, in our history and we actually post all of this publicly. So if you go to lendingleap.ca slash statistics, you can actually see all of the loans that we've done by volume. You can see breakdown by, uh, you know, mix in terms of industry as well as the risk bands. And you can also see which loans have defaulted by risk band. Um, so as I mentioned, we have had a couple go bad. I mean, that's normal in, in the course of lending. The important thing to note is, is that you're, you must be diversified when you're lending. So even though loans do go bad, as long as you're spreading your risk across many, your aggregate net return should still be positive. Um, so if you look at our lending portfolio as a whole, um, I think right now the, the net yield uh, after losses is still in the double digits for, for investors. So even taking into account the, the losses that have taken place. Okay. So you, you typically you're lending to small businesses that are existing established businesses that are doing business. They want to grow or need operating capital or maybe refinance other debts. What about people that are looking to acquire an existing business? Have you guys done any acquisition loans of that nature? So we will do acquisition loans only for existing businesses looking to grow or expand their business. So if you're not currently an operator or you know, you're someone that's just looking to get into the business, that's not uh, currently something that we do. Um, we will do acquisition financing for you know, one restaurant wanting to buy another restaurant or one construction company wanting to buy another construction company. So we have done things like that in the past. 
uh, or even opening new locations, for example. So we've done a couple of, uh, of loans where the businesses want to, to open a second or a third location, but we won't do uh, loans right now to, to just individuals who don't yet have, uh, have an existing business with existing cash flows. Okay. All right. So then my next question was going to be then about startup, but that kind of answers that question is you're not going to, yeah. you know, even if there was security in the form of uh, like machinery and equipment that someone was able to, to offer, if they were going to buy to start a new business, that's still not something you would look at. You want to see an established pattern of operator capacity and cash flow, right? Exactly. I mean, that, that's the most important thing for us in terms of, uh, of how we're lending. Um, and for the investors that are using lending loop, we want them to have a good experience. Um, Especially, you know, right now when we're a relatively new company, it's really important to to make sure that that credit quality stays high of the business that we're lending to. Um, so uh, absolutely, kind of right now, we're really focused on you know existing businesses with a proven track record um, that are looking for capital as opposed to a new business um, that, that hasn't yet got that track record, really um, to safeguard our investors that are using Lending Loop. What's, uh, what's the biggest size deal that Lending Loop has done to date? Uh, the biggest deal I believe today is about one hundred and fifty thousand okay. um, dollars. So that was uh, mainly for an inventory purchase. Um, the, the the size of the deal is more so restricted by how many lenders we believe will be interested in a given deal. So you know we believe we could do two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand if the deal was right. It really comes down to you know the particulars of that loan, how long they're looking for the funding for, what type of rating they have, uh, and things like that. How has the um, how has your service been accepted by investors? Like, do people who try it out seem to enjoy it and and want to contribute to more deals? Yeah, we've had uh, a really great experience when it comes to kind of our customer engagement. So, you know, I mentioned the twenty five dollar thing earlier, where people try it out with just twenty five dollars. What we see is the majority, the vast majority of them actually come back after that first experience. So they try it out, see how it works, get that first monthly repayment of, of interest and principal, and then you know, realize that this is legitimate. It's something that, that actually works and we're a real company. Um, and they'll typically come back and, and double or triple their initial investment. So I think because you know we're so new, as I mentioned, a lot of people are hesitant or skeptical at first. Um, but once people do, you know, dip their toes in and, and try this out. I think there's a lot of people who really like it and, and like the type of returns that they're able to access through our platform. So, you know, thinking about this from the business owner's side of the table, um, when I think of something like this, it's new, it's different. I think maybe of a, a business owner who's been declined by a bank who then says, how am I going to go and find the money to do whatever it is that I want to do? Um, how do you see yourselves? Do you see yourselves as a, a as an alternative when banks say no, or are you positioning yourself to be a first choice for some people? And why would some uh, business owners w want to prefer to do business with you, for example, over a, a charter bank? Yeah. So, so I guess the position that we see ourselves in the market is really in between banks and traditional alternative lenders. Um, so. Unfortunately, banks have a very tight lending criteria when it comes to small businesses, not because they're low quality, but simply because they don't want to put the time and energy into evaluating that business when it doesn't make a lot of money for them, right? It's, a, it's one of their least profitable lending segments. And as a result, they've really not put a lot of resources into growing their small business lending sector. So there's a lot of high quality businesses that do get turned away from banks, as you were mentioning. So we're not a subprime lender and we're not a lender of last resort. There's a lot of other alternative lenders that businesses can go to, but they'll charge a much higher interest rate than us you know we're talking about 30 40 50 percent apr so we're really kind of we see ourselves for those businesses as the next step after the bank so if the bank isn't able to provide them with financing we're an affordable financing solution for high quality businesses at the same time we also do lend to businesses that could qualify for bank financing so i'd say there's quite a significant number of our customers that would easily be able to get capital from a bank they just don't want to wait 60 to 90 days and spend 32 hours filling out a loan application, which is the, the average amount of time that it actually takes. So, you know, it's a very slow, inconvenient process for a business owner for, for them to maybe pay, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars extra from what they may be paying from the bank is not a, you know, the biggest deal for them when you actually evaluate how much time they're saving with us. Yeah. Now <clears throat> in my work as, a finance broker before I was a business broker and in my business brokerage days and today in my consulting practice, I've probably shepherded well over a hundred people through the process of setting up 
their forecasting, et cetera, to make the presentation to the bank and then gone through the process of waiting for bank approvals and then, you know, maybe then request for appraisals and things like that. Um, so I understand what you're talking about, about the timeline that can be impacted. I know when I was a business broker, if there was no bank involved in a deal, it usually cut the the time to do a deal uh, sometimes by as much as two months because we, we didn't have to do all that stuff. So speaking of time, what is the average experience on Lending Loop as far as the time it takes to get enough investors to commit to to some of these loans? Yeah, so so there's two two important time frames. One is how long it takes us, I guess, on, on the onset to actually evaluate that loan and give a decision. And that's one to two business days. So it's a very quick turnaround from the time a business owner actually applies to being approved by us. The next time slot, which is, as you mentioned, which is how long it takes to fund, can take up to 30 days. Uh, we're, we're always working to increase our investor base because that will bring that funding time down. I think the you know average is probably around a week to 10 days. So it's a relatively quick uh, funding timeline. And some loans have even been funded in as low as two hours from the time that we put them up on our marketplace. So there's a, it varies based on a number of factors, but our focus is really to get that down to as short a time frame as possible. We believe that businesses should be able to apply financing and get it within a week. So on crowdfunding sites, for instance, there's often an expiry date or a deadline. Um, and if the goal hasn't been reached by that time, then the, the deal doesn't happen. With Lending Loop, is there that kind of constraint that it has to be funded within a certain time frame? Yep, there is. So we we list loans for up to 30 days. Um, so that's kind of that, that cutoff time. Now, the difference is in some cases, we may reduce the loan amount where it makes sense to do so. And others, we may let it expire um, as you mentioned, where you know they simply wouldn't get any proceeds at all, but that really depends on the business. So, it, you know, if the business could actually make use of a smaller loan amount, then we would advance the funds to them. If we didn't believe that they could, then we would probably expire the loan uh, in its entirety. The good thing is, is that most loans actually have no issue at all getting funded. They're all funded well before the 30-day mark, uh, and that kind of speaks to, I guess, our, our process on the front end. Do now, how does it work from the point of view of the entrepreneur for as far as fees? Do you charge a fee for doing the underwriting and and how does Lending Loop make its money? Yep. Uh, yeah. So we charge an origination fee. Uh, that's the only fee that we charge to the business because the interest, of course, is, is going to the lenders, not us. Um, so the origination fee ranges from two and a half to six and a half percent of the loan. Um, and that varies based on the uh, factors like the riskiness of that loan and the duration of that loan as well. Um, so that's kind of a, a weighted scale over there. The, the only other revenue source that we have is, is the spread that we take off of the, the lender's interest. So we take a one and a half percent spread um, on the paid interest rate. So if the business is paying 11 and a half percent, you as the investor would really receive, would be receiving 10%. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's cool. Is, you know, Cato, thank you for agreeing to speak with me today. Is there anything else that uh, you think that uh, or viewers may want to know about Lending Loop uh, before we uh, before we head off. Yeah, no, thanks again for having me on. Um, as I said before, I think I'd encourage anyone to just give it a try. Um, you know, the minimum is twenty five dollars, so it's very very easy to to access. Um, whether you're a small business or an investor looking for a higher return, it's a it's a great proposition. So you can find us at LendingLoop.ca and always contact us if you have any questions as well. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Cato. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching. Also, don't uh, forget, if you're interested in local investing with small business, you have to check out my 2014 best-selling book, Invest Local. You can get it on Amazon or from investlocalbook.ca. And uh, with that, well, thank you very much, Cato. And uh, we'll see all of you guys next time. Thanks. Thank you.